Hello, and welcome to Under 1000. My name's Thomas Flower, and each episode I'll read you a piece of super short fiction. All of the stories are 1000 words or less. Today, I'll be reading Last Hope for Escape. Please be aware that this episode contains strong language and deals with themes of death and body horror. So if that's likely to upset you or anyone you're listening with, then you might want to skip this one. You can't be serious. There's no way. She knew he would disagree, but the ferocity of his anger at her plan was still surprising. And what else are we meant to do exactly, John? She snapped back. Sit and wait for this shit to overwhelm us too? We don't have another option. But there's no way we'll make it. Come on, please. We've got to think of something else, he said, pleading with himself as much as her, she reckoned. She knew he knew there was no other way. But the time it would take him to sit in denial was a problem she couldn't wait for. There isn't another plan, and even if there was, we need to get out of here fast. There's no time to sit around and think of alternatives. Either we get out and go now, or we get destroyed along with everyone else. But you know we're never going to make it that way anyway, right? was his only response. He wasn't wrong exactly. To escape the oncoming disaster, they'd have to get through the mountains on foot. Even if they had a vehicle, they'd have to stretch themselves to the very limit to survive. On foot, it was almost guaranteed to be impossible. If we go, there's a tiny chance we might make it. If we stay here, we're definitely going to die. I know which option I'm going with. You with me or not? Deandra shot back, collecting their scant supplies as she talked. John paused for a minute, looking confused and afraid as he imagined the likely outcome of their doomed getaway plan. Finally, defeatedly, he said, Yeah, I guess so. Only option, like you said. Grab this bag and let's go then, Deandra replied, stuffing the final few items into a rucksack and chucking it his way. They set off quickly, leaving the abandoned tin roof shack they'd been temporarily squatting in and following the trail that led towards the mountain. John was muttering to himself as they walked, but Deandra couldn't hear what he was saying clearly. Is everything okay with you? she asked eventually, more to make him stop than anything else. I just... I... I can't believe this is happening, and I just know we're not going to make it. We're as dead as everyone else soon enough, and I just... I just... I... I can't... I... Shut up, John! Stop it! Deandre yelled at him, suddenly angry. We're in a shit situation, and yes, we have almost no fucking hope, and I know that. You think I don't know that? But you wanting to remind me of it is not helping either of us. We've got to have faith now, don't we? I'm choosing to believe that I'll make it. You think what you want, but keep it to your fucking self. They carried on in silence for the next hour, both fuming indignantly at each other, neither wanting to be the first one to break the silence. Eventually, they came to a small cavern in the land where the road had caved in and fallen away. It stretched along the horizon further than they could see. Shocked at the sudden lack of road to follow, John spoke up again. What are we going to do? There's nowhere left to go. Deandra could feel the despair coming from him, but refused to let it affect her. Pausing to think, she gathered herself before replying. There must be a way round. If we follow it for a while, we can find where it ends. But then we'll be lost. We've no way of getting back to the road. Well then, uh, let's jump it, John. I don't fucking know. What great ideas do you have? We can't jump it, was all that he could think to say. Deandra looked over the edge where the road had given way. They might be able to jump it and survive, she thought. It was wide, but not so wide that it was impossible, and it wasn't so deep that they'd be stranded if they fell in. Suddenly, from behind them, they heard the sound of squelching and groaning. Deandra's hair stood up on the back of her neck. How had it made it here already? A mountain of flesh and gristle and fabric. Millions of corpses melted and fused together to form a tsunami of indistinguishable human mass. Deandra hadn't seen it properly, just heard the news reports coming from the city before she'd fled with John the night before. They both knew that if it reached them, they would be absorbed into the pile, 
stripped down and incorporated as mere organic matter to be consumed and fuel further consumption. John, we've got to jump this thing now, Deandra shouted out, knowing there was no other way. I... I don't know. It's so wide and... John stammered, looking terrified. Not waiting for him, Deandra stepped a few metres in front of the edge and took a running jump. For a moment, her body was suspended in air, caught someplace between reaching the other side and falling into the pit. After seconds, which felt like hours to her, she landed on the other side. Come on, John, jump, it's easy, you can make it, she screamed, willing him to trust her. The wall of flesh was fast approaching now. Could it see them? Was it hunting them? Or was it just expanding blindly out? She couldn't tell. Either way, it would swallow John up in mere minutes. John stepped back, preparing for a running jump as Deandra had done. The doubts raced in his mind. He was convinced this was the end, that even if they made it to the other side, there was no escape for them. He began sprinting ferociously along the tarmac. Reaching the edge, he leaped, hoping against hope that Deandra's faith was enough to carry them both. Thank you for listening to Under 1000. I'm your host, Thomas Flower. To follow the show online, look for Under 1000 Pod on Twitter or Facebook. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash under 1000 pod, where you can sign up for bonus content and a thank you to be read during these credits. The theme music is an instrumental version of In Between Days by Nick Tate and the Sharks. To hear the full song and more from the same EP, go to Nick Tate, N-I-C-T-A-T-E, and the Sharks.bandcamp.com or search for them on your favourite streaming platform. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you'll join me again next time for some more super short fiction.